Let's talk about triggers. A trigger is a seemingly disproportionate emotional reaction to something. A trigger is a disproportionate emotional reaction to something. And right now, with most of us stuck indoors most days, with a lot of our ways of escaping taken away from us, we are going to find that we are triggered a lot more often or that our old triggers are coming up even louder than they did before. And so it's really important now as much as ever to understand what a trigger is, why it's there, and what to do about it. So a trigger happens when something that wouldn't upset somebody else too much upsets the hell out of you. Now the upset can come in any form. Maybe you suddenly get really angry. Maybe you suddenly get really sad. Maybe you get confused. Maybe you shut down. In extreme cases, maybe you go black. And it's the thing that causes it doesn't seem to make any sense. And you might think that something is really wrong with you. You might be beating yourself up. Why, when he just said that, did I lose my mind or did I cry or did I shut down? What's wrong with me? Or you might think that of somebody else. Why? It was no big deal. Why, why are you reacting like that? Whenever you find yourself saying, why am I reacting like that? Or what the hell's wrong with them? It's almost certainly that they or you have been triggered by something. And the first thing to understand about a trigger is that you have no choice about it. The first thing to understand about a trigger is that you have no choice about it. So if something happens to you and you find yourself suddenly screaming or crying, the underlying emotional reaction that you're having, that sadness or that rage, is something you have no choice about. That's really important because a lot of us beat ourselves up or beat other people up for having an emotional reaction. When we realize that that emotional reaction is not voluntary, that emotional reaction is a reflex, it's an instinct, it's there's no choice or will in it, then maybe we can start going easier on ourselves. Okay, while the underlying emotional reaction is not a choice, how we process that reaction is a choice. So if you find yourself filled with rage, you're not gonna stop yourself from feeling that rage. In fact, it would be unhealthy to even try. But there is a difference between acknowledging the feeling of the rage, oh, I'm so angry right now, and punching someone. That's very different. So whatever the emotion is that the trigger brings up in you, you want to be with that emotion as much as you can. You want to feel that feeling and acknowledge it. Oh, I'm so angry, or oh my God, I'm so sad, or oh my God, I don't even know what to do, I can't handle it. All of these are healthy reactions. They might seem disproportionate, but they are healthy. That's the best you can do in the moment of the trigger. Okay. What is causing that trigger is a really interesting question. Everyone is gonna have a different cause for each trigger, but they all have something in common, which is you are triggered by something in yourself that is very deep. There is something in yourself that is very deep that the external situation is poking at. There is a wound in you that the situation is poking at. It's like if you had a, a, a really tender bruise physically on your body and somebody touched it and it really hurt. That's the same thing as a trigger, only it's emotional. And so how do you heal that trigger? How do you get to the point where you are no longer triggered? Well, like I said, the first step is to acknowledge that you don't have a choice about it and that this wound is very deep in you. Acknowledge that you don't have a choice about it and the wound is very deep in you and you've already made a lot of progress. Now the next thing you wanna do is start to understand as much as possible what situation or situations are causing you to be triggered. You wanna make a little map of your own psychology. Be very specific. It can be like when X person uses Y word, I fly into a rage. Writing that down, expressing that to yourself, acknowledging that that's what's happening with you is really helpful and really healthy because it allows you to take some control over your own psychology. It also allows you to let people who are triggering you know what is going on when you're calmer and you can work together. 
So when you say this, it really triggers me. It causes this reaction in me. I want you to learn that so that you do that less, so that I react less often. It is perfectly healthy to make a note of what you're triggered by and then try to work around those triggers consciously. It is perfectly healthy to make a note of what you're triggered by and then try to work around those triggers consciously. By doing that, you're telling yourself on a deep level that your feelings matter, that your experience matters, and that in itself is healing. Now in the end, all the charting of the trigger and the acknowledgement of the trigger is not necessarily or is unlikely to be enough to actually heal it. To heal it, you have to go to the wound itself and bring some love there. To heal the wound at the bottom of the trigger, you have to go to the wound itself and bring some love there. And almost invariably, you will find at that bottom place a real trauma. And you don't want to go into your deepest, darkest traumas unless you really know what you're doing and you're doing it with love. So that's a subject for a different show. But for now, we remember, you don't have a choice about your triggers. You want to acknowledge how they feel to you. You want to figure out what's causing them. And you want to bring gentleness and compassion to the depth of the pain from which they come.